I'm joined today by Allison Melman and Ben Higgins. Allison is the founder and executive director of Active Minds, the nation's leading nonprofit organization for young adults and mental health. Ben, as many of you already know, he's a former contestant and fan favorite on The Bachelor and Bachelorette. He's also the co-founder of Generous Coffee. He recently released his memoir, Alone in Plain Sight, Searching for Connection When You're Seen But Not Known. We're hosting this conversation because it's time mental health is prioritized publicly and talked about openly and comfortably. At Kendra Scott, we're committed to being part of that change in our culture. And this year, we launched a new commitment to mental health as an important social change effort. And in January, we kicked off that commitment with the announcement of a new national partnership with Active Minds, specifically promoting mental health conversations on college campuses across the country. Knowing that 50% of us will struggle with our mental health at some point in our lives, clearly this issue will touch all of us, either with a personal struggle or through someone we know and love who is struggling. Having open conversations about our experiences, our care and recovery, what's working and what help we still need, this is what helps us ensure that someone else, somewhere around us, feels just a bit more comfortable getting the help, the care, and the support that they need to. Ben and Allison are two amazing individuals who are, in their own ways, leading this conversation. Allison Melman is the founder and executive director of Active Minds, an organization that has worked to change the conversation about mental health for young adults ages 14 to 25 years old for the last 18 years. Allison got into this work after losing her college-age brother, Brian, to suicide when she was just 18. Ben Higgins, we all know so well from The Bachelor, but his recent book gave the world an honest reflection on his own mental health journey and an open presentation of one man's struggles and solutions. I'm so excited for us to share this time together. Welcome, you guys. Thank you for, for being here. Those that are new to this conversation, let's start with just some facts. We know that 50%, which is a big number, are going to struggle with mental health, right? Yeah. And we know that this is going to happen sometime in our lives. So that means that even if it's not you, the reality that someone you know, someone you love is going to be going through this some point in your life uh, is just reality. What does this look like today? And, and, you know, kind of what are you guys doing to really help this conversation, uh, you know, happen? Yeah. I mean, what you're bringing up, Kendra, is just so important is that mental health issues are not isolated to a certain type of person or a certain demographic or whatnot. So many people struggle with their mental health at any given time. And so many of us are struggling right now. And so our goal at Active Minds is just to get people talking about these issues because one of the biggest struggles is that when you're hurting, you're hurting alone because we're so quiet about it that we think we're the only ones. And yet if 50% of people are struggling, we know that we're not the only one. And so the work that we do at Active Minds, our goal is to get people People talking about mental health every day, not just when a crisis occurs, but when somebody says, hey, how you doing? Don't just answer, I'm good, but actually answer the question. Because the moment you actually answer the question with, I'm having a hard day, that gives permission to the person that you're talking to to say, I'm having a really hard day today too. And that, and that dialogue is just so critical for all of us to know that we're not alone, to know that it's not our fault, and to make people feel comfortable getting the help that they need, whether it's professional help or it's you know every day going out for a run or journaling or whatever it is. And so our goal is to normalize this conversation. You know, I think for us at Kendra Scott, why we got so excited to partner with Active Minds this year was because of truly that. And, and being able to have, like you said, this open dialogue and take the stigma away and saying it's okay to not be okay. I've loved seeing so much of that this past year of people yeah. really using words like that, that it's okay to not be okay. And let's talk about that and let's be open and how can we support one another? And I think, you know, it's important that, like you said, that we just have that open conversation. Yeah. Um, so I want to talk, Ben, so excited and pleased when you published your book, Alone in Plain Sight. Um, I especially love that you have all of this importance of like finding connection with yourself and with others. And I also just loved how you could be so open and, you know, had this incredible self-reflection and discovery and that you shared that. How has a positive relationship with yourself affected your overall mental health? And what was that? What was like the biggest shift for you? Mm. 
Well, first off, thank you for having me. It is, I'm a big fan of Kendra Scott, as you know. Uh, we have a, a long history of partnerships through you know different projects I've been a part of. So really good to be here. Also, Allison, you kind of took, I'm gonna just like really like kind of mirror uh, what you said uh, and just talk it in, in terms of my life because you said some things that really hit home for me. I was just kind of sitting here smiling. So I was like, this is, this is good stuff. This is the things we should be talking about. One of the things that Allison said that really stood out is the idea um, that we feel alone. And in fact, like uh, over 40% of people today, and it's growing rapidly, admit to a feeling of being alone. And that they're saying that, and, and this follow-up question that is like, has this feeling affected your, your daily life in any way? And people would say yes. So 40% of people can feel that way. I argue in the book um, that actually our shared pains and sufferings can actually connect us, that that's what helps us understand we're not alone. In fact, I, I start the book by talking about how I've lived most of my life feeling alone or struggling with feeling alone. And by me saying this publicly at one point on national television, more and more people reached out to me and said, hey, I feel the same way, which in conclusion says, hey, I'm not alone in this feeling. I'm not alone in this despair. But yet for 27 years of my life, I believed I was. I believed that I was the only one experiencing this and that nobody would relate. And if I did share it, I would just get pity. I wouldn't get any empathy or I wouldn't get any actual love and, and, and relationship. So one of the things I have to continue to do, because I don't want to make it sound like I have a positive relationship with myself still to this day at all moments in times. I still, that is still a battle that I fight often. However, uh, through my friendships and through my relationship with myself and through counseling uh, and through talking about this, I've been able to develop some tools in my life. Like ask myself, who am I in this moment? Meditate when I'm feeling, contemplate when I'm feeling pain. What is it that's bringing me this overwhelming feeling? What do I need to identify so that I can go out and speak to it with my friends and my romantic relationship with my fiance? Or if I need to, if, if there's no way out to get professional help, to go and sit with somebody and say, hey, I have this thing that's heavy on my chest or I have this thing that just I can't get out of my head. Can you help me process it? Can you help me work through it with you? And so what I know now is what it feels like to have a positive relationship with myself. Uh, I also know that that's still a battle I fight. And I don't want anybody to think that once you do overcome it and once you do identify that there is uh, some type of, of light and that there is a healing factor to it, that that will be that way forever. It comes back but you've developed tools to know what it takes to get on, to get through or just sit in it maybe. What I love about what you just said, Ben, is that I think, first of all, that vulnerability and transparency is so important. And when you said that others could relate, I think that's so important. It gives people a safe space to be able mm -hmm. to, like you said, say, wow, that's me too. Or yeah. I have those feelings. I know in my own life and in my children's life, I have teenage teenagers and you know, obviously struggling through a lot of different things, yoga, meditation, and us having an open dialogue of being able to say, I'm not not having a great day today. I used to try to be like polished and happy every day and like always be like, I'm good, I'm good, I'm strong, I've got this. And people around you that are really close to you, they know when you're not good. And so one of the things that we really you know, try to do in our family is to say when we're not good and to be open and honest about that. And I think showing that to each other and knowing that you have a safe space of okay, I'm here. I'm listening to you. I hear you. I think it's so cool that you shared that in your book. So thank you. Um, I actually bought your book for my sons. Um, now I've got to get them to read it, but, uh, but I bought it. It's on, it's, it's on their nightstand. So I'm hoping my, uh, my older boys will read it. So yeah, really awesome. So thank Allison, you. you know, I want to talk to you a little about your entry also into this conversation, you starting Active Minds. I know that you had a very traumatic tragedy happen in your life. Um, would you, you know, share that with us, kind of what you went through and, and what really sparked this passion for you to be able to help others? Yeah, um, I'd be happy to. And I, and I want to start um, by echoing what you just said, Kendra, and thanking you, Ben, for being open about your story, because so much of this also has to do with how we interpret our feelings and especially for boys and um, young men and men in general and how difficult it is to express feelings and, and deal with our emotions as men. I could say that, you know, as a woman having grown up with a social worker mom, I knew it was okay to talk about feelings, but, and even though my brother knew it too, it felt a little harder for him. So, um, you know, I, I got into this because of my brother, um, because when I was a freshman in college, I lost him to suicide. Um, he had been a college student himself who had started struggling 
struggling with his mental health in his freshman year, but didn't tell anybody about it and thought he was the only one, thought everybody else was having the time of their lives, thought there was something wrong with him and um, finally went and got help in his senior year. At that point, he took a voluntary leave of absence from his school. He came home. He got in very intensive treatment of all different sorts, um, but ended up taking his life about a year and a half later in my freshman year of college. And uh, it was really that time that he had been struggling so severely alone that I started reflecting on so deeply. Brian and I were really, really similar people. We were really close. And I started thinking about the fact that he had you know, been struggling with his mental health and um, with really severe symptoms and, and really feeling uh, down on himself for so long and yet not feeling comfortable telling anybody. And I realized that you know, the society that we were living in, the culture that we were living in, nobody was talking about this. And shortly before Brian died, I, you know, he told me that he thought it was his fault and that he was the only one. And he had been in a desert of loneliness for so long. And I was just so motivated after he died to shift that on its head and create a culture where, no, you don't have to struggle for so long alone. You don't have to feel like it's your fault and you can get help as soon as you need it. And, and that's really been the blossom of Active Minds and, and where we have grown um, over the 18 years since I started the organization is really creating this space, especially for young adults, to open up this conversation to say, this is stuff that really matters to me. This has impacted me. This has impacted my family and I'm not going to be silent about it anymore. Bolstered by the fact that suicide is the second leading cause of death for college students and 75% of people who have a mental health disorder become ill before the age of 25. Like the young adult age is the age that this issue presents so much. And yet I didn't learn that as a young adult. I only learned that after doing my own research after losing my brother's suicide. And there was something wrong with that. And so if we can create a culture bolstered and um, by the next generation who's going to talk about these issues differently and approach these issues differently and change them for their community, their school, and their family, um, then we can create a different world and one where people can share their experiences, be very open about it, and can get the help that they deserve as soon as they deserve it and as soon as they need it. First of all, Allison, thank you so much for sharing that story. I know that is not an easy one to share. As a mother to teens, um, I agree with you. There's a, there's a different type of pressure, right? There's a different with social media. The things that, you know, a lot of things I didn't face as a, a young adult they're facing today. You know, you've now been at this almost 20 years, which is yeah. remarkable, right? What have you seen kind of in that mental health conversation change over the, the last 20 years? I love that question because I, I laugh a little bit because there, there was no mental health conversation 20 years ago. I mean, I think that's the biggest piece of it is that there was literally not a single conversation about mental health anywhere. As I said, my mom is a social worker, so we had a little bit of it in our home, but, but that felt like an anomaly. There, there was no media. There was no conversation in our schools. Um, we went to a you know great public high school system outside of Washington, D.C. Brian and I both went to great colleges and so had all the privilege possible to be in an environment where we could have had all the conversations possible and yet there was none. And so over the past 20 years, what I've seen is in opening up a sharing of stories that we talked about already. It doesn't have to be sensational. It doesn't have to be like major, you know, press announcement or major billboard. It's simply the sharing of one story that encourages somebody else to say, hey, like my story is okay too, and I can share it too. And that snowballs. And the, that one-on-one -on -one conversation about, wait, you have bipolar disorder, or you've, you've dealt with suicidal thoughts, and you don't look quote unquote crazy or whatever it may be. You're just somebody who has this too. Wow. Like that's a big sigh of relief. And that just didn't happen 20 years ago. But I really, really credit you, Kendra, and you, Ben, for making that conversation okay out in the public eye. Because so often mental health issues are seen as something that we are to be ashamed of, either as a family or as an individual. And when somebody that we look up to says, I too have dealt with this, I too have dealt with depression, or I have a family member who has struggled with these thoughts, it makes it okay to experience it as a person. And I know Brian, 20 years ago, had not a single role model that he could look up to who said, I have depression or I have schizophrenia, whatever it may be. There was nobody that he looked up to that gave him the 
the idea that you could still live a great life even with a mental health struggle. The opportunity to have this conversation in a larger domain with influencers and with folks that um, really give somebody um, the opportunity to look up to is changing and saving lives and it's amazing. I can't wait to see what happens in the next 20 years and hopefully yeah. we can start to see those stats, right? Those statistics that you talked about earlier be hugely changed. I want to talk a little bit about what each of you have seen, you know, that's been effective in changing this culture, right? Around mental health. How do we create more of these conversations and what things have worked for you in feeling like you could, Ben, especially you, like being able and open in this position of power really that you are in now and influence to have the bravery and the courage to have those conversations? Uh, okay, there's a lot to unpack. There. I'm going to try my best here. <laughs> if I start to ramble, just slow me down and ask me ask for some clarity. Okay, so the first thing when you say that is what I think is like the social media following, the platform, right? That's probably the most effective thing or maybe the, the greatest tool, uh, material tool that I have to my disposal right now is the platform handed to me. But what I found really effective for me is the one-on-one -on -one conversations, uh, is being present in the moment with the people around me and the network around me. One thing I've done for myself personally, you know, I went through a really uh, dark season of life where there's a lot of things going on in my life that I was confused by, that, that, that I couldn't process. I gave my friends, I said, hey, I'm gonna give you the permission to speak truth into me. Like that, you know, I, I'm hurting right now. It's gonna be weird if you have to confront me on this. So I wanna give you the permission and open up the space for you when you see that I'm struggling or you see when I'm hurting or you see when something's off, to just tell me like, hey, how, you know, ask me how I'm doing because I wanna be able to be honest with you. I've also opened up that door for anybody in my life around me is to say, hey, when you're hurting, just know I've been there too. Uh, I would love to be a resource to you if you need a, a listening ear. The second is then how do I respond as well? And it's, um, I understand through my time is that nobody really, even the best counselors, they didn't necessarily fix me, right? There's nothing that's going to say that's all of a sudden lights are going to go off and go, hey, you know, I'm going to get out of this, this time of, of being super depressed, or I can now step out of bed for the first time in a couple of weeks and walk and the light, you know, everything's going to be fine. It's not, that's not how that worked. What I recognized in myself, I had to, to learn who I was. I'm a Christian, so that's a little different, but like I would say, I'm a child of God. I'm loved. I'm loved by friends. I'm loved by, by my, my family that I have a purpose, I have a value, I have breath. Just the, the fact that I, I'm breathing today is a gift and, and that's I'm thankful for that, I don't wanna lose that. The final thing I would say is I, I don't necessarily have anything to fix anybody. I don't have any words that are gonna fix anybody. I'm not a professional. I, there are professionals out there that can really do a lot of greater work, but I just wanna sit with people in their pain uh, and not let them feel any more isolated. I wanna be that person that people would look at and say, hey, I'm gonna go to bed and I'm gonna sit there, I'm gonna cry for three hours because I know he's not gonna to try to fix me. He's not gonna to try to say the right thing. He's just gonna let me do that and he's gonna sit beside me in that. That's, that's Those are the kind of the tools that I've had. Now, again, I'm not a professional, but with the platform, it's a little different. It is just, again, opening up the door or trying to show myself in the most authentic light. That's really hard to do on social media. You only wanna kind of show the snapshots. And so if social media continues 30 years from now, uh, they're not gonna all of a sudden be like, oh, there's the real bit. No, they, they've gotten to know me through this process and it's part of my authentic light is that, Hey, I, I, I struggle. Like it's not always easy. Um, there's a lot of tears, uh, coming from this body and there's a lot of confusion and a lot of chaos at times. And, uh, and you need to know that. Uh, and if, if you like that, if you want to be along for that ride, well then keep following me. If not, well, don't, I guess. You've used your platform in such a powerful, amazing way, truly. And you have made it okay for people to feel like they can talk about this. And I think there are people that see the struggles that they're going through, through you as well. And, you know, social media can be this perfect, pretty uh, airbrushed world of non-reality, right? And everyone starts to think that that's how they have to be, happy, perfect, pretty, uh, all those things. And so the more that we can have that what you just said, being our authentic selves, even on the days that aren't good and being able to tell people I'm having a rough day today or here's some things that I do when I'm feeling down. Thank you for, for being that beacon. And I do think, you know, you've got a lot of people that will follow you and those are the people you want following you. I always say that too. You don't follow me, it's okay. Uh, I want the people that want to follow me and I'm with you 100%. I'm so excited, first of all, that we have been able to have this conversation and so thankful for both of you. You know, I want to think about a little bit, just talk about really quick as we, we look at this last year. I mean, 
I have to take a beat because for myself personally, um, and for, you know, obviously the whole world uh, was something that everybody was struggling. Um, you know, through this, I had major surgery. I had all these things happening in the midst of, I almost lost my dad uh, twice uh, to heart attacks, global pandemic, closing all my stores. And I kept saying to myself, it can't get any worse. <laughs> I just remember waking up and going, you know what? It can't get any worse. It's got to get better. And then something else would happen. And I would almost be like, you'd start to go, is this, is it a joke? Is this real? Uh, and I remember just thinking, okay, how do I get myself through this? Because honestly, I would some mornings be afraid to get out of bed because I didn't know what thing was going to be thrown at me next. And in that, always trying to be the CEO, the strong one, the leader, the one that has to figure out all the answers and being able to start being open on, you know, yeah, today I'm scared or I'm sad or I'm worried or, you know, and, and starting to be able to be more vulnerable. I think like for me, it was just being able to, to show that. And then I, like you said, seeing it back with my employees, the people around me and the support that we all gave each other, because we were all struggling with different things. Um, mom staying at home, homeschooling. I was doing that with my seven-year-old. We started groups of moms trying to like talk about what they're going through and how we can help each other. I would just love for you guys, you know, to kind of end with not just this year, this year tested all of us, but what are some tools that people could leave with uh, that you guys have just seen that are effective when they have those days that they don't know if they want to put their feet on the ground in the, in the morning? <laughs> yes, um, all of what you just said, Kendra, and I think so much of it, one of the challenges is it's so personal. For all of us, that thing or those things that help us put one foot in front of the other is going to be different for each person. So there is the meditation and yoga and there is mindfulness and there's also therapy and there's also medication and um, inpatient treatment if it needs to get, you know, to that point. And, and that's all okay. And I'm hopeful that what 2020 has taught everybody is what we need for ourselves, what we need to, to be okay. Um, and I did a little reflecting on this actually earlier in 2020, because we had hit the, um, the 20th anniversary of my brother's death. And I remember thinking about the, how broken I felt right after he took his life and in the months after that, and, and the resilience that I feel like I have built in the years since that didn't necessarily come immediately, but has helped me through every element of what has come into my life afterwards. My hope is, if nothing else, what people have learned is a little bit of hope and is learned a little bit of what they need for themselves and the people around them so that we can get through this, recognizing that everybody's situation is different and everybody's coping skill is different, but to know that we will get to the other side of this, which means that we can get to the other side of everything else that comes our way. I'm also really hopeful that we've learned how to better support each other. Ben, you were saying something earlier that just was resonated with me so deeply. We have a, a program at Active Minds called VAR, Validate, Appreciate, Refer. And it's a training we created with the students who are part of our network of more than 600 chapters across colleges and high schools in the US. And the idea is, we don't often know what to say to somebody who's struggling, but we want to say something. And so the basic sense of validate their, their um, experiences, appreciate they've shared with you and refer to resources. And my hope is what 2020 has taught us all is how to do that, give grace to ourselves mm -hmm. and how to be better friends and family members to the people around us, to validate their experiences appreciate that we're all going through a really, really hard time, and then refer to the skills and support that we need, whether that's a run or yoga or meditation or inpatient treatment, psychiatry, psych, you know, therapy, whatever it may be, or some sort of combination of it all, because at some point in our lives, we're all likely to need some combination of all of it. And, and it's going to ebb and flow. And we may not all have mental illness, but we all have mental health. And this year has really shown us that our mental health is a really important part of our everyday well-being. We can put one foot in front of the other with, the, with support from each other and build that resilience for ourselves. Such great advice. Ben, I know you've got some words of wisdom down as well. So we'd love to hear from you too. You know, alone in plain sight is my journal. So like it started out as, as a journal because I was in a really heavy place. And I started writing and that turned into the book here. So one of the things I like to do is I like to write. Uh, I have this kind of this thing that, that most people find odd. I find it very, very cool. 
I get overwhelmed fairly quickly. Uh, and like, if I just, I, I just do, I, I'm, I'm somebody easily overwhelmed. So I come here to this house and I turn off all the lights at night and I play uh, a playlist that I have kind of formulated over the years. And it's usually like a folky playlist and I just light a candle and I write and I let, I call it and my fiance was talking about, and I, I was like, I let my mind go. I mean that she's like, that's the weirdest thing ever. I was like, no, I let my mind go. I let the thoughts come to me. I let my emotions arise. I sit in silence in a sense, the music's playing, but I sit in silence to allow myself to hear myself so I can get a grasp on myself. That's one practice. Exercise is big for me. In fact, I just got back from the gym. I'm still in the sweatshirt, so I apologize for that. Okay. Uh, but uh, it's something that... Your authentic self, Ben. That's right. That's right. So uh, I, I, exercise is big for me. You know, I'm an introvert uh, at, at heart. One of the ways, though, that I do feel healthy is, uh, or the, one of the tools, especially in 2020, is, and I think this has been a, a beautiful thing to come out of it, and I hope it continues, is to slow down enough to sit with people and to say, how are you? No, 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 no. No, this is not us passing by. This is not a text conversation. That is not me on my way to work. This is not me on my way to do whatever. No, I have time today to, to call you to say, how are you? I can't imagine a feeling worse than being alone and sad. And so one way to, to help that is to feel, uh, is to work with people and to tell them where you're at so you feel less alone. And finally, I've said it every time, but is to speak truth into yourself. Do you believe that hope still wins? Do you believe it doesn't win? And if so, why? I have a show that I do on Instagram live every Wednesday night that I've done for a few weeks now. And that's the question I ask every guest there. I bring on thinkers and I say, do you believe hope still wins? If so, why? And if not, why not? That's a question you'd ask yourself. Do you believe hope still wins? If it does, why? And just speak that over yourself. Uh, Cause I believe it does. Well, thank you guys. I, I loved every single word that was spoken today. I feel so incredibly humbled to be able to have this conversation with you both. And, and also I am hopeful uh, because we are having these conversations and we are being able to get out there. And I know that us continuing to do this and others being motivated hopefully by watching this to do the same, we can affect a lot of people. Every day, the thing I do is I do three things that I'm grateful for. Today, I am very grateful for you, Ben, and very grateful for you, Allison. And I am grateful to be alive and thawed out in Texas uh, as well but so grateful for this conversation and and thank you all very very much for everything and and, and thank you for active minds um, for all the youth you guys are helping it's truly remarkable and I'm gonna get my boys to read that book so thank you so much take care y'all thank, thank you Kendra you.